Hello everyone, and welcome back to SharePoint Pittsburgh. My name is Leo, and I'll be teaching you today's lesson. The lesson for today is SharePoint User Security. So what is SharePoint User Security? SharePoint User Security controls who has access and what type of access a user has to a SharePoint resource. Today's lesson is going to follow a slightly different format. Before we dive into SharePoint, we're going to have a discussion on User Security 101. Once everyone has a full understanding of the basics, we're going to go ahead and jump into the fun stuff. Okay, so let's get started. The first item on our agenda is something called AA, or Authentication and Authorization. So what is authentication? Authentication answers the question, who are you? And authorization answers the question, what are you allowed to do? The best way to demonstrate this is with an example. When I was in high school, I had an internship opportunity with a company called Four Systems. They developed switches and routers, but more importantly for today's discussion, every employee, or intern in my case, required the use of a security clearance badge. In order to get into the building, you had to swipe your security badge. The security system would know this is Leo, which is an example of authentication, and then subsequently unlock the door for me, which is an example of authorization. To add to this example, if I tried to get into a high security area by swiping my security badge, the security system would know it was me, Leo, again authentication, and then would deny me access by displaying you are not authorized and subsequently not unlock the door for me. Now that we understand authentication and authorization, we can move into user permissions. User permissions are simply what are we authorized to do. In our last example, the only permissions the security system could give us were deny or allow. In SharePoint, we've got quite a few more. For the most part, however, our permissions can be broken down into an acronym called CRUD, which stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. For now, let's just leave the security permissions at that. Next up, we've got Microsoft's implementation of authentication and authorization, otherwise known as Active Directory. Active Directory is akin to the security badge security system in the example above. In practice, the system contains all the groups, users, and their respective permissions for within an Active Directory domain. While I'm not really doing justice to Active Directory as it's an amazing system that does a whole lot more, for our purposes we can simply think of it as an AA or Authentication and Authorization System for SharePoint. Now that we've got all the tough stuff out of the way, what is a SharePoint group? A SharePoint group is simply a group of users that all have the same permissions. For instance, in SharePoint, we have visitors, members, and owners groups, which all have different security levels such as read-only, contribute, and full control respectively. Groups can come from within Active Directory or be created directly from within SharePoint. So now that we understand groups, where do the users come from? You guessed it, Active Directory. And finally, what is inheritance? In our previous lessons, we discussed how SharePoint is laid out in a tree structure hierarchy. All elements or resources in SharePoint have their parents' permissions. For example, a list in Happy Scoops would have the same permissions as the Happy Scoop site as long as inheritance wasn't broken, which in some cases this is something we might want to do. So why is inheritance such a great thing? Imagine we were a really big company with tens and thousands of SharePoint sites. Now imagine we have to create a new security group for each one. It would be a major headache. Inheritance really is just there to make our lives easier. Okay. Now that we've covered Basic Security 101, let's find out what we're going to be doing today from within SharePoint. We're going to log into SharePoint and demonstrate AA, then we're going to add a user to a group and demonstrate permissions, then we're going to add a group and demonstrate permissions, and then also demonstrate inheritance.